Welcome to Catholic Culture Audiobooks, a production of catholicculture.org and under the patronage of St. John Henry Newman. Today's reading, Catechesis I by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, translated by Leo P. Macaulay, S.J., narrated by James T. Majewski. Wash yourselves clean, put away the misdeeds of your souls from before my eyes. Disciples of the New Testament, sharers in the mysteries of Christ, as yet by calling only, but presently by grace as well, make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit, that you may become a subject of joy for the citizens of heaven. For if there is joy over one sinner who repents, How much more will the salvation of so many souls gladden the blessed saints? You have entered upon a good and glorious course. Run the holy race in good earnest. Eager for your redemption, the only begotten Son of God is present among us. He says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Clothed as you are in the rough garments of your offenses, and held fast in the meshes of your own sins, listen to the prophet's voice, saying, Wash yourselves clean, put away the misdeeds of your souls from before my eyes, that the angelic choir may chant over you, Happy they whose faults are taken away, whose sins are covered. Guard unquenched in your hands the torches of faith you have just lighted, that he who of old here on all holy Golgotha opened up paradise to the robber because of his faith, may grant you grace to sing the bridal song. If any man here is a slave of sin, let faith fit him for the new birth of adoption that will set him free, exchanging the ignoble bondage of his sins for the blessed bondage of the Lord. Let him be counted worthy to inherit the kingdom of heaven. By confession, put off the old man which is being corrupted through his deceptive lusts, to put on the new man, which is being renewed unto perfect knowledge of his Creator. Attain by faith the pledge of the Holy Spirit, that you may win admittance into the everlasting tabernacles. Come forward for the mystical seal, that you may be recognizable by the Lord. Be numbered in the holy, spiritual flock of Christ, that you may be set apart on his right hand and inherit the life prepared for you. For the lot of those still clothed in the rough garments of their sins is on his left hand, because they did not attain the grace of God, which is given through Christ in the regeneration of baptism. I do not mean corporal regeneration, but the spiritual regeneration of the soul. For bodies are born of visible parents, but souls are reborn through faith. For the Spirit breathes where he will. Then you may hear, if you are worthy, Well done, good and faithful servant, when you have been found free in conscience from hypocrisy. If there is any man here who thinks of tempting God's grace, he deceives himself and knows not its power. Let every man keep his soul free from deceit because of him who searches hearts and reigns. For just as those who set about levying an army examine the ages and constitutions of those who enlist, so the Lord when he raises his levy of souls, examines their motives, and where he finds a secret hypocrisy, he rejects the man as unfit for the true service. But if he finds a man worthy, he readily bestows his grace upon him. He does not give what is holy to the dogs, but where he discerns a worthy motive, there he confers the wonderful seal of salvation. Before this, demons tremble, whereas angels acknowledge it, so that the former are put to flight, while the latter honor it as something kindred. The recipients of this spiritual and saving seal must have the proper disposition, for as the pen or the dart requires the hand of the user, so grace also demands believers. The armor you receive is not corruptible, but spiritual. The paradise into which you are to be planted is not seen by the eye, 
you are being given a new name you did not possess. Instead of catechumen, you will now be called a believer. From now on, you are grafted upon the stalk of the spiritual olive, like a slip transplanted from the wild olive into the good olive tree, from sin to righteousness, from corruption to purity. You are to be made partaker of the holy vine. If you abide in the vine, you will grow as a fruitful branch. If you will not abide, you will be consumed by fire. Let us then bear fruit worthily. May we be spared the fate of the barren fig tree. May Jesus not come even now and curse us for our barrenness. Grant that all may be able to say, I like a green olive tree in the house of God. An olive tree not visible to the eye, but spiritual and luminous. While it rests with him to plant and water, it is your part to bring forth fruit. It rests with God to bestow grace, but with you to accept and cherish it. Do not despise the grace because it is freely given, but rather cherish it with reverence once you have received it. Now is the time for confession. Confess your transgressions, whether in word or deed, by night or day. Confess at the accepted time, and on the day of salvation receive the treasure of heaven. Be earnest about the exorcisms. Be constant in attending the catechesis, and be mindful of their teachings. For they are delivered not merely that you may listen to them, but that you may seal by faith what you have heard. Banish from your mind all human concerns, for the race you are running is for your soul. You are forsaking completely the things of the world. Little are the things you leave behind. Great are those bestowed by the Lord. Lay aside things of the present and put your trust in things to come. You have passed through so many cycles of years in the vain service of the world Will you not spare forty days for the sake of your soul? Desist and confess that I am God, says Scripture. Renounce idle gossip. Do not slander nor listen readily to the slanderer, but be prompt to prayer. Show in ascetic practice the firmness of your heart. Make clean your vessel that you may receive more grace. For though the remission of sins is granted to all alike, the communication of the Holy Spirit is granted in proportion to the faith of each. If you labor little, you will receive little. If you work hard, your reward will be great. You are running for yourself, so look to your own advantage. If you have aught against any man, forgive it him. You are coming forward to receive the remission of your own sins. You must, in turn, pardon him who has offended you. Else with what face will you say to the Lord, Forgive me my many sins, if you yourself have not forgiven the few sins of your fellow servant? Be zealous in your attendance at church, not only now when the clergy demand diligence, but after receiving the grace. For if before its reception it was a good practice, is it not good thereafter? If before your engrafting it is a safe course to be watered and tended, Is it not far better after the planting? Sustain the struggle for your soul, especially in these days. Nurture your soul with holy readings, for the Lord has prepared for you a spiritual table. Repeat in the words of the psalmist, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose, beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul that the angels too may share your joy, and Christ himself, the great high priest, ratifying your purpose, may offer all of you to the Father, saying, Behold, I and my children whom God has given me. May he keep all of you well-pleasing to himself, to whom be glory for the endless ages of eternity. Amen. This has been Catechesis 1 of the Lenten Lectures by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, 
Translated by Leo P. McCauley, S.J. Narrated by James T. Majewski. Copyright 1969 by the Catholic University of America Press. Production copyright 2020 by Trinity Communications. This podcast is brought to you by catholicculture.org and made possible by listener support. To donate, please visit catholicculture.org slash donate slash audio. That's catholicculture.org slash donate slash audio.